This is not financial advice. I'm recording my thoughts about Spotify. In this video, I'm going to give my thoughts about Spotify being able to do a 20x in 10 years. So why are we even talking about a 20x in 10 years? That is because of their CEO statement. The CEO of Spotify said that they can make about $100 billion of revenue in 2030 and that they can make 20%, in other words, $20 billion of operating income in 2030. So if I apply a multiple of 20 to that 20 billion operating income, this company would be worth about $400 billion. Currently, they are at $20 billion market cap, right? So that's going to make a $2,000 stock price or a 20x in 10 years. So this looks super attractive. If they can actually achieve those numbers, we can do a 20x in 10 years. Let's first look at Spotify's business model. Spotify is an audio streaming service like YouTube Music but they have about 400 million users at the moment out of which 180 million of them are paid users like premium users and rest of them have a ad supported tier. These ad supported tier users will have to hear ads but they can listen to the music for free. Let's look at each of Spotify CEO's claims to evaluate them one by one. First, he said the number of users can be 1 billion in 2030. Currently, they have about 400 million users. So getting to a billion users by 2030 doesn't seem unreasonable to me. With respect to revenue, currently they make about $10 billion, but he's saying they can get to $100 billion in 2030. That means almost a 10x in revenue. When the number of users do a 2.5x in 10 years, even if you hike the price by 3% each year, that would still result in about $30 billion of revenue. So how come Spotify is saying they can make $100 billion of revenue? For that, they have to have about 70 to 80% of the users become paid members and they have to pay almost 2 to 3x more in order to make Spotify get this $100 billion of revenue. For me, it feels like a highly improbable task, especially when they have huge competition in the form of YouTube Music, Prime Music. With respect to YouTube and Prime Music, they come as a bundle. So Amazon and Google, they don't even care how much they actually charge for this YouTube Music and Prime Music, right? So, so it's very difficult for Spotify to hike their fees unless they get very exclusive content that is not available in YouTube Music or Prime Music. And now let's move on to gross margins. Currently, they have about 25% gross margins but they are saying they can get to 40% in 2030. In order to understand gross profit, we have to understand the business model of Spotify. Spotify, as I said before, is an audio streaming company, so they have to get content from different creators or creating companies. Currently, Spotify relies heavily on Universal Music Group and Warner Music Group. So these music content groups they need Spotify because Spotify has a user base of 400 million and Spotify needs world-class music. So they need to collaborate with Universal Music Group and Warner Music Groups. In a way, they are dependent on each other. But at the moment, it seems like the negotiating power of Spotify is not as much because the gross margins are only at 25% for Spotify and they are in the order of 40% plus for the music companies. At the moment, Spotify is pouring a lot of money in building audiobooks and podcasts. And they're saying that if they have some exclusive content, then they will increase their gross margins because they don't need to pay any royalty to any external music company. In my opinion, it is highly unlikely, but we don't know what the future holds. I would definitely think if they get to a billion users, they will have more negotiating power with these music companies, but I don't think they can get to 40% gross profit margins. They can get to somewhere between 25 and 40%. With respect to operating margin, currently they are in negative. They're not making any operating income, but they're saying they can get to 20% operating income in the next nine to 10 years. And 20% operating income is possible if they can get to 40% gross margins and also become extremely efficient with respect to their operating expenses. Even if they get to 40% gross margins, I think they have to do a lot of execution to get to that 20% operating margin. In conclusion, I don't think I can believe the management's claims of $100 billion of revenue or 20% operating margin because I think it's extremely optimistic. Even if they do a near perfect execution, I don't think they can get to all these numbers. Let's look at my take on what's more realistic price target for this company. And for that, I'm only going to look at five years out 
I don't think I can do an evaluation 10 years out because a lot can happen in 10 years. So I'm going to evaluate this company in January of 2027. In 2022, they made about $9.7 billion of revenue. And for the revenue growth for the next five years, I need to come up with a number, right? So for that, I looked at their past few years performance. They could grow their revenue in the order of 20% or more. And when I looked into the previous three or four quarters, it's the same. They're growing in the order of 20%. So I'm going to assume that they can grow about 15% in the next five years on an average because as the company gets bigger and bigger, it's harder to grow. So if they can grow at 15% in the next four to five years, they can make about $20 billion of revenue in 2026. And like I said, they can get to gross margins in the order of 30% plus and net profit margins close to 10%. So I'm going to assume 10% net profit margin with which they can make about $2 billion of net income in 2026. I'm going to assign a multiple of 20 with which this company would be worth about $40 billion in 2026. Currently they have about 194 million outstanding shares, but since they are planning to pour a lot of money in creation of the audiobooks and podcasts, I'm going to think that they're going to dilute the shareholders little bit. So I'm going to assume about 2.5% dilution for the next four to five years. This company will have about 219 million outstanding shares. When I divide the $39 billion of market cap with 219 million outstanding shares, the stock price would be about $178 in 2026. Currently they're at $102. So $178 in five years represents about 70% growth in five years. So we're looking at a reward of about 1.7x in five years, but it definitely needs good enough execution because we're assuming that they are getting into the net profit margin of 10%, whereas they are losing money now. And we are also assuming that they can maintain 15% or more growth rate with in revenue for the next four to five years. So overall, the reward is not so good for me to put money into this stock. Uh, like I said, I have Google and Amazon that can do a 2x in the same amount of time with low to medium risk. So at the moment, I'm going to pass on Spotify.